assalamu alaikum i hope so you are doing fine hey, let us take our lecture forward we will discuss the lesions of medulla oblongata okay there are two lesions there are two syndromes that i like to discuss the medial medullary syndrome generis gerin's anterior bulbar syndrome and lateral medullary syndrome wallenberg syndrome so let us look at that anterior medullary syndrome occurs when the two vertebral arteries that are present here one of that becomes blocked when one of that becomes blocked the affected area it's near the midline the affected area is near the midline so to understand this lesion i will suggest that if you have not follow through with the lecture of the cross anatomy of medulla oblongata and spinal cord before moving on to that but now if you have reached through here just identify the structures that are getting involved and then just follow through them so this structure is affected that is the pyramid pyramid is the corticospinal tract pyramidal tract is responsible for all the voluntary movements of the body that it will it we are in this particular picture we are above pyramidal decussation the tract will go down cross the midline at the junction of medulla and spinal cord and will go down and supply the muscles so the lesion of this will lead to upper motor neuron type paralysis of the contralateral side of the in other words there will be contralateral spastic hemiplegia there will be contralateral spastic paralysis both the upper limb and lower limb will be affected why contralateral because if there is the pyramidal tract on the right side if it is damaged here it is will be unable to supply after crossing the left sided muscle because the right sided cerebral cortex was supplying left sided muscles and left sided cerebral cortex was supplying the right sided muscles then there is medial lemniscus medial lemniscus was responsible for discriminative touch proprioception two point discrimination vibration and all these fine sensations again at the medial lemniscus we are standing above decussation so it will lead to the loss of two point discrimination vibration and proprioception on the contralateral side why because a signal coming from the left had crossed at the level of pontomedullary junction not pontomedullary had crossed the midline at the level of sensory decussation at the lower end of medulla and then had moved up as middle lemniscus so it will lead to the contralateral loss of tactile sensation vibration and proprioception and last but not the least the 12th cranial nerve nucleus the hypoglossal nucleus it supplies the tongue this is the lower motor neuron by the way if you have ever confused whether this injury like that it's the upper motor neuron lesion or the lower motor neuron lesion just ask yourself the question is the affected neuron the last one on the way to the muscle this hypoglossal nucleus is the last nucleus because its axon is going and it will terminate only by making the neuromuscular junction with the muscles of the tongue this is the hypoglossal nucleus it will not the nuclei the axons coming from nuclei they do not cross the midline they just go to the muscle of that side so it will have flaccid paralysis of the same sided tongue ipsilateral lower motor neuron type paralysis of the tongue sometimes in the clinic you have to identify which left or right side of the tongue is paralyzed or left or right cranial uh, hypoglossal nucleus is damaged so remember the mnemonic tongue licks the lesion if you ask the person to stick the tongue out the unhealthy tongue will deviate towards the paralyzed side it will go towards the paralyzed side and it is due to the occlusion of anterior spinal artery that is be made by the fusion of these two at this point or the vertebral artery and there is lateral medullary syndrome and wallenberg syndrome here is the this vertebral artery give rise to 
this posterior inferior cerebellar artery that goes all the way to the side of the cerebellum and suppress of the medulla and go on to the supply the inferior surface of the cerebellum so this artery is responsible for supplying the lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata so if that artery is affected all of these areas will be affected so just take a deep breath and just start going through the affected structures one by one inferior cerebellar peduncle is damaged so the signal going to the cerebellum will be affected there will be a loss of issues of balance there will be issues of normal walk there will be issues of normal gait and abnormal gait there will be loss of normal gait is called ataxia the person will be walking like a drunken person and balance will be issues there will be balance issues and there will be other issues then there is vestibular nuclei vestibular nuclei are receiving the input about movement and balance and position from the inner ear from the vestibular apparatus if those are affected all those signals get jumbled up and that will lead to the loss of balance dizziness that you feel the vertigo and due to that there will be nausea vomiting like feeling and the to and fro pendular movements of eye called nystagmus then there is nucleus ambiguus that was the muscle that was supplying that was the nucleus that was supplying the muscular component of special visceral efferent component of glossopharyngeal vagus and cranial part of accessory and those were responsible for supplying the palate pharynx and larynx if the larynx is affected voice will be affected there will be dysphonia and dysarthria pharynx is affected swallowing will be affected there will be dysphagia and the palate effect will be lead to nasal tone of sound and nasal regurgitation and loss of gag reflex is also due to pharynx affected pharynx it is spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve as we discussed earlier spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve receives pain and temperature sensations from the ipsilateral half of the head and neck so there will be a loss of ipsilateral pain and temperature loss then we spinal thalamic tract more prominently anterior spinal thalamic tract a spinal uh, spinal thalamic tract spinal lemniscus and this is carrying the pain and temperature from the contralateral half of the body remember it had already crossed the midline near its entry point so there will be there will be contralateral loss of pain and temperature descending hypothalamic fibers these are the fibers that are going to supply to the sympathetic outflow nuclei so that will lead to the lack of sympathetic outflow descent and these tracks travel with the uh, spinal thalamic tract so due to the effect of that the person will have loss of sympathetic outflow that is called horner syndrome that is identified as ptosis meiosis and hydrosis drooping of eyelid pain point pupil and lack of sweating and this is due to the pica posterior inferior cerebellar artery that we discussed goes all the way to here okay so that's what it that's the lesion of the mid brain or medulla oblongata i hope it was beneficial for you if you have any questions suggestions or feedback please mention in the comments do follow us on our social media handles the links are given here and uh, inshallah see you in the next lecture till then allah hafiz